And I told her, I don't care if he is her husband. Right now. It's time to rise from the grave, pour yourself a cup, and enjoy the coffee crypt. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of The Coffee Crypt with my co-host, Steve. Hi, Angel. Yay, the first episode, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Oh, my gosh. Right. Happy New Year. Right. Um, it's so exciting. Uh, we had started talking about doing the Coffee Crips about a month ago, I think. Yeah, about a month. Yeah. So for the viewers, right? So the Coffee Crypt was just kind of born out of like our prior collaborations. We really enjoyed working with each other. Yeah. Angel approached me with an idea of doing something, but we weren't quite sure what yet. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, like, I want to do I something, do but something. I don't know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so we were kind of just like brainstorming um yeah. and we we're thinking of like stuff that isn't done as much like there are news like channels and there's reaction channels yep. um but i kind of got struck with this idea and i really i love kind of the classic cheesiness of a morning talk show yeah so kind of from that the coffee crypt was born mm -hmm. um where we're going to be talking about topics that are trending on social media yep. um news stories we'll probably do some um kind of opinion piece kind of quasi yeah. reviews but not really it's going to be a little more casual maybe a little more fun yeah yeah right, right. so <laughs> i don't know it's exciting it is, yeah. I, and we're, um, we're going to do bi bi weekly, right? Yeah, more or less, yes. More or less. <laughs> more or less. So everyone can expect at least two episodes a month. I yes. think we're gonna. I think that's safe to say. Yes. Um, yes we're gonna definitely. be exclusively on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, some months are crazy, right? I think April or May has like four or five Sundays, in, so we're not going to be. What's <laughs> 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 that? That's cool. a lot. We're both parents, so we're gonna, you know, yes. it, it's a lot. And Angel, already you do so much already. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, I try not to think about it. To be honest, it's like <laughs> yeah, we were talking about editing, and you're like, you can edit. I do like five shows a week or something. I know. How do you? I don't know how you manage. I don't. I don't. I don't. I. <laughs> I just. I just kind of fake it until I make it. To be honest with you. When mm -hmm. I first started deciding that I was going to do more content, I think I was kind of bit off a little more than I could chew. But then I was like, well, it's already out there. So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, let's do more. I <laughs> well, am sure everyone that watches appreciates it. So I hope, yeah. 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 I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, why don't we kick it off? Yeah. All right. So um, I, I will be surprised if people who, especially who know me, didn't know that this was probably going to be on the first episode. But one of the first things we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about some trailer releases that have come out in the last few weeks. Um, and the first one we're going to talk about is Scream 6. Yay! <laughs> I was laughing so hard. So the day that it, or like the moment it came out, mm -hmm. I got a notification, two notifications on my phone. One was you texting me that it was out. And the other was the article from Bloody Disgusting that it was out. And I was yeah. like dying laughing. I was like, oh my God, I have to go watch this. So on my lunch break, because I was at work, I went and watched it in the car and mm -hmm. then filmed my like one minute, you know, like thoughts. And you can tell I was like so excited about it. I'm a huge Scream fan. Um, I really loved when I first heard, you know, that they were talking about doing it in a bigger setting. It was going to be in the city. I was like, oh my God. So, you know, in the trailer, we get this very short, not very long clip of them essentially on in the subway. And it's all, you know, our main few people from, you know, five, the survivors. Mm -hmm. And they're on this train. It looks like it's Halloween. Which is cool. Uh, which is so cool. I was so excited about that. Halloween then, scream. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So excited. And so then you're seeing all of these like masks and People are dressed up, and then of course, while they're on the train, they start they start like you start picking out the a ghost face mask, and then there's like this the lights kind of flicker in and off as they're going in and out of I guess like tunnel I don't know something, and so um, and then the last thing we see is Mindy being pinned by somebody in a ghost face mask, yeah. which was like oh my god, like putting it in a bigger setting outside of the small town. I am like so excited about this. 
Yeah, it's different, you know. I think different. by the sixth movie, you got to do some different do stuff. Different. Yeah, yeah. And so, then, what were yeah. your first thoughts, like seeing all the? the well, maps. you know, you know, New York is my neck of the woods, so mm -hmm. it is very cool to see them in yes. my city. I don't live in New York City proper, but I right. grew up around the city. So I grew up yeah. on Long Island, which is like a 40 minute train ride in. And now I'm in Westchester, yeah. which is like a 50 minute train ride in. So I'm like, right. I'm always kind of, you know, I don't live in the city, but I kind of get to enjoy it from afar. And like, yeah, sure. You know, yeah. I, you know, so that was, it's, it's just one, it's just cool to be living in a, in, in a state where Scream is taking place. Yeah. But you know, seeing on the subway, I mean, they, they, I know they didn't film in New York. They filmed in, Ca uh, not California, they filmed in uh, Canada. Right. So, like, I, you know, I think they built out a whole subway. I think there's, like, um, like yeah. a cast picture, like, of them outside, like, a real built subway station. So, like, they kind of nailed it. Like, it looks, it looks pretty, like, it doesn't look phoned in. Yeah, it looks um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so I loved seeing, um, well, first, all the little Easter eggs. In oh my the god! Yeah. <laughs> all the horror icons, but then you got to see like Ready or Not. You saw Samara Weaving's costume in there, yep. which was really cool to see. There was a lot of cool ones. Yeah, um, and I, I like that it was a short teaser. You know, yeah, I think... don't too, don't tell us too much. Yeah, Come on. I think they kind of learned their lesson from Five. I think because a lot of people like dissected that trailer ad nauseum. And like people kind of pretty much guessed the killers and like all they that gave was out way there. So, too much away. Yeah. So I appreciate it. it was short, sweet, and it you got the vibe and it felt right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. And then you I don't know if you've seen this, but um somebody that I follow made a TikTok about this because they are like this avid like Stu Mocker is going to be in six. Like they are like determined. Mm -hmm. Because the other thing that was released the same time the trailer came out was that photo of the ghost face mask worn in weather, kind of like oh, a Michael yeah. Myers mask. And um which which I wasn't mad at. I'm like, oh please let that be what that means. Like I would love for Stu to come back. But there's this part on the train and I've gone back and I can kind of see it. There's like a scene where there's somebody kind of off in the distance. And if you zoom in it does look like an older Matthew Lillard. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of like, oh, like, you know, yeah. and, and it could be total BS, right? But it just looks, um, yeah. So I, I'm like, I'm so pumped. I think this is a great opportunity for them to do something new with the franchise. Take yeah. it outside, you know, of the small town energy. Take it into a bigger, like, because now it's like, oh, are they going to do like Cult of Ghostface? Like, what are they going to do now? Because there's so, there's, there's so yeah. much more possibilities. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to see like Gail and her element at the new studio. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. I think, yeah, there's so much focus on like the new cast and like, there's all the, the drama with Nev and not getting paid and yep. her not coming back, but like yep. it overshadows like, you know, like get, you know, yeah. Courtney is coming back and I'm, ex you know, we should feel, you know, we should be excited we to should see be Gail pumped. again. Um, yeah. And and freaking Han Hayden Panettiere, like come Kirby. on, Kirby! Oh my god! I mean, I, I she was my favorite from four. I don't know, a hundred percent, she's my favorite from four. Yeah. Yes, and I wanted yeah. like a proper like. I hope we get it in this one, um, like a proper Kirby versus Ghostface fight because we didn't really get that in four. We got a phone call and the and the quiz, and which the was game. Cool. yeah. But we didn't quite get like her really fighting back. And I feel like that's probably what a lot of maybe her arc might be. I don't know. We'll see. That would be awesome. I would love that. I also, I'm going to be honest. I know this is way out in left field. I also would be okay if she was like the ringleader for the Ghostface cult. Like take a swing, make it really different. Just go somewhere crazy with it. Yeah. Just like as like a survivor. Like I think that would be crazy fun to just really just smash that like they probably won't do that. That's probably they, a bit ambitious. They probably but it'd be fun. won't. But I would. I honestly would love to see it. <laughs> yeah. I would. I, I would like a like an evil Kirby. Like uh, yes. Like her just going the complete opposite yes. way you would think. Exactly. Yes. Um, exactly. And then, honestly, that would work too because that also kind of plays on the opposite of this trend of PTSD, right? You have like the. Yeah. How Laurie Strode handles her trauma. How yep. Sydney handles her trauma. Sydney, yeah. Right now, this would be the complete opposite Total of opposite. how those people handled it right yeah. yes. so 
I don't know, bring it on. Whatever they yeah. got, I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm ready. I'm going to see that opening night in the theaters. I already have my mother-in-law babysitting. I said, nah. <laughs> I was like, hey, um, Mar the night of March 9th, I need you to watch your son. And she was like, you oh, yeah, plans? sure. So that we can have plans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. I love it. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm going to see it. Like, I don't, yeah. 100%. And I know this won't be the last time we talk about it, so... There's just a little, little, little taste on the, on the teaser. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So that's our, yeah. So scream six was the teaser for that was, was a great way to kind of get us to the end of the year. I was really excited about yeah. it. So that comes out. The official release date is March 10th, which means it will be in theaters March 9th at night time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah the, not to confuse anyone. No, I, always, I know what like, you meant though. Cause they always do the Thursday night showing. Thursday night like, shows. Yeah. 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 Eight o'clock or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, sometimes yeah. they're even earlier now, mm. which is, Hey, I I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, all right. So, uh, the next kind of trending, the, 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 the trailer has been out for a while, mm -hmm. but, um, Megan coming out January 6th. Um, I am very excited. For <laughs> uh, um, it, so Megan has taken gay Twitter by storm. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yes. Twitter by Storm in general, but the yes. gays have really taken to her. Um, I, you know, from the sassy one-liners in the trailer to just the dance routine. Oh, like, my God. I know. Everything about it screams high camp. I'm so excited. What, <laughs> what do you think about it? Oh, man. So <laughs> I think, you know, I've seen it. A lot of people compared it to Child's Play and have tried to make the comparisons and I think the difference is, you know, when when the original Child's Play came out, it wasn't what Chucky has become now, which is this like comedy horror icon, right? Like he he was he was scary. Like yeah. he was legitimately scary and unsettling and you were afraid of him, not like wanting to be his bestie because he's funny, you know. Yeah. And I think this is definitely like a lighter take on a doll situation. But I also mm -hmm. love the, I mean, the AI kind of stuff is, in, is, is always a, like a good thing for me. Like I always appreciate that because I always feel like that's way less far-fetched than like magically possessed dolls, you know? So um, I yeah. think it's going to be fun. I think, I don't think, I don't think Megan is going to scare me, but I think I'm going to enjoy the experience. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't <laughs> think there's a lot of frights in store. Yes. Um, it may be a yes. horror movie, but yes. um, <laughs> yeah, uh, it is PG thirteen, so it's going to be a little bit on the tamer Softer side. Well, side. Yeah. I don't, you know, some PG 13s have a way of um, sneaking some stuff in there. They uh, do. That's true. But, yeah, right. I mean, just, just get creative with it. Um, yeah. I'm not one of those people where I'm like, a horror movie needs to be R. You know, I think it's... No, I'm not like that either. Except possession films. I don't think possession films should ever be PG-13. You're no, limiting... the devil's not PG-13. That's kind of the... Right? Like, it's hard to... You can't yeah. really censor, like, that kind you of... Should, you shouldn't. Because then it takes away from, like, the effectiveness. So, but but to your point, there's a lot of PG... Um, I actually just did a TikTok on that not that long ago about my five, like, PG-13 picks. Because I believe PG-13 horror is still really good horror. So... Mm -hmm. This, I think this is going to be fun. I don't think this is going to disappoint. No, no. I think so many people have said it like, you know, they don't know if it's going to be good or bad, it's but they're, they're very either way, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, so we will definitely have to chit chat about our friend Megan. Megan. <laughs> when we go see it. Yeah. So that comes out January. That's January 6th. 6th. I've seen, well, 6th. I've seen so many funny tweets about Megan storming the Capitol because <laughs> of that. <laughs> <laughs> I have not seen these. That's oh my. Well, I mean, that those tweets aside, <laughs> there's been some funny tweets about that. But, yeah. um, oh, but speaking of Twitter, not related to the, the date itself, but have you seen the beef between Megan and Chucky? Yeah, you sh you told I, me about oh, it after the last video we did together, and I went and um, followed both so that I could see it. It's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, oh. good sense of humor. Those whoever's running those um, accounts or whatever. Yeah. Give those PR people a raise. <laughs> um. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So shortly after that comes in February third, we get knock at the cabin. Did I say that right? Knock. Knock at the Cabin. Knock at the Cabin. Yes. Knock at the Cabin, which is an M. Night Shyamalan movie, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I was I started second guessing myself. Okay, so 
I know he has become a very gray area for a lot of people because mm -hmm. he's had some phenomenal films and he's had some not phenomenal films. Um, and old, I think, disappointed a lot of people. I still haven't watched it yet, but I think it's one yeah. that like put people kind of out on him for a while. However, this is um, I just so I just watched the trailer for that like two two days ago, this week, right? It came out recently. I think it was yeah, like four, it's four very four recent. Ago. Yeah, yeah, and so um, and I didn't really know what it was about. It's based off of a book, I think, or something. Oh, it's based off. I, of I didn't know. I think it's based off of something. I think it's based off a book. But so I watched the <laughs> the trailer for it and I was thinking like, oh, okay, cool. It's like a slasher, you know, kind of movie. I dig. I like slashers, obviously. No, no worries there. But then the like, <laughs> they get in the cabin and they're like, you have to make, you have to choose to sacrifice someone in your family to prevent the apocalypse. And I was like, well, this just went somewhere totally different than what yeah. I was expecting. And then it shows like some of the events on the TV and like this family is like there. It's these, um, I think it's a family of three, right? It's just the, the two, the husdads and the daughter. And the daughter. Yeah. They don't have another kid. It's just the one kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and one of them is um, Jonathan Groff, who I really like. Yes. Yeah. And then it, meanwhile, it's got um, the guy from, what's the guy, the big guy, what's his name? Oh, Dave Batista. Um, yeah. Him, uh, Ron Weasley. Um, <laughs> yeah. he'll always be Ron Weasley, Ron right? Weasley yeah, yeah. um, but which really surprised me because I was like, okay, like getting into something a little different here, but yeah, so Apocalypse, like I was like, oh my god, like it seems like this is going to be a really intense movie. Um, I think, um, hopefully they didn't reveal too much in the trailer, it is kind of a long trailer, so it mm -hmm. does show a decent amount of scenes and conversations. Hopefully that doesn't end up being a like a bad thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, all in all, I think I think it looks really interesting. I'm interested to see what happens. Um, I like home invasion kind of things in general, and this kind of has that with like the extra apocalypse stuff. So I'm I'm really interested in this one. What did you yeah. think? Yeah, it's definitely a different take on the home invasion kind of trope. I yeah. you know, I'm curious like on how it's gonna play because M. Night Shyamalan, like Right, like his his whole shtick is the twist, right? Like that's what he's kind of known for, right? Is like him, yep. you know, wanting a twist ending, and that's what you know. And he's most famous for the Sixth Sense, and that's yep. really what propelled his career yes. forward. Right. You know, and I think he's kind of always lived in the shadow of the Sixth Sense. You know, a hundred percent agree. Yes, you know, and so yes. everyone kind of compares it to that. Um, yeah. he's had a couple of gems, I think. You know, I agree. Along the way. But um, I, you know, I'm intrigued by it. You know, it's not yeah. really, you know, there is an inherent mystery to it. It kind of reminded me a little bit of this Twilight Zone episode from the 2000s. It was the 2002 Twilight Zone version. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was a, like a, a group of friends and they're like exploring a temple and they knock over this like sacrificial bowl with blood in it and the sun goes out. And then they all have to like, they're all like contemplating, like, do we have to kill one of our own and use their blood to bring the sun back? And it's like this whole like moral quandary thing. Oh, so okay. it kind of, it reminds me of that, you know? Yeah, I can see um, that, yeah. So, but I'm curious, yeah, I'm like, I guess, you know, it, he's not, it's not promising a twist, but you're expecting a twist. It's going to be hard not to, it's going to be hard to go into something like that and not expect it, especially with this being so kind of out there as far as like, premise mm -hmm. you know yeah I'm, I'm 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 cautiously optimistic i think that's the best way to describe i think a movie of his like any anytime i go watch one of his movies oh i know, you know? yeah because you just don't know if it, it, it to me like i don't think i've ever seen a movie of his that was middle ground i either loved it or hated it that's fair you know like i mean i like i like quite a few of them and then a few of them i'm like you know <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we'll see, but I think theme wise, this, this checks a lot of boxes for me. Um, there's a, you know, a semi supernatural element with the threat of the apocalypse and these mm -hmm. people who have to stop it. There's the family stuff. It's a home invasion kind of feel there's natural disasters. It checks a lot of boxes for me. Yeah. So yeah, we'll have to see how that one goes. So it might get you in the door, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. And that, and that is February 3rd. Yeah, and, that's, really and every trailer we've talked about so far is going to be in theaters. We have one coming up that is going to be a streaming on demand film. Yeah. 
um, which next we have, there is something wrong with the children. And that's going to be on demand um, January 17th. Yeah. Um, so the description for that is a family that takes a weekend trip with longtime friends and they're two young children, but they suspect something supernatural when the kids behave strangely after disappearing into the woods overnight. Yeah. Um, I... I, I I was I like was pleasantly surprised with this trailer. Like I you know I didn't really know what to expect. Like I you know I don't know yeah. if it's based on anything. I was just like oh yeah okay. Um, the the cast I can't remember their names, but I recognize the main guy mm -hmm. um, and one of the women, one of the mothers, one of the females. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it kind of it's giving me a little like Pet Cemetery, maybe a little Children of the Corn. Not quite, but like. Really the more innocence. Like Did you see that? The innocence. The, the innocence. Yep. 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 Yeah. Kind of reminds um, me of that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, it seems. You know, it doesn't seem just like your typical evil kids movie. I think there is a little more going on under the surface. I, yes. Um. You know, there definitely is some other supernatural stuff going on because there's like there was like a shot of a trailer song being like dragged across the floor. Oh yes. Um, yeah. 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 So, like there's other stuff that seems to be happening. So yeah. Um. It's a lot going on. Yeah. 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 So what did you think? To, you know. Um. So I think I'm. This is one that I'm not sold on exactly yet, mostly because it also kind of reminded me of Significant Other, which is a streaming movie on Paramount Plus, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, this couple goes out into the woods. One of them disappears for an extended period of time. They come back and there's something off. Right. Um, I think that it does remind me of a lot of things we've already seen. So I'm intrigued to the point of, I want to know what's going to make this unique. What's going to mm -hmm. set it apart as a horror film. I think kids are an easy go-to for creep. Kids are creepy. Like I have one, they're creepy. Like they do <laughs> creepy things. And, um, and I think it's um, it's always interesting because we associate children with innocence. So this concept that like in this situation, the children are the threat potentially. Mm -hmm. Like I think it's got potential. Um, I, I don't know that it's, I might, it would probably take some convincing for me to pay to watch it. But otherwise yeah. I'm, I'm curious enough to eventually watch it, but I don't know if I'm curious enough that I'm willing to pay to watch it. We'll have to see. Because right. it's not a free streaming. Right. Movie. It'll You're... be a four or $5 rental. It's yeah. going to be a rental. Yeah. yeah. Um, exactly. You know, if you forgo, you know, like someone who goes to the theaters maybe a lot, maybe you forgo going to the theater that week and you see this instead, you know, kind of, who knows, maybe it works out to being the price of a ticket or something. But I might, yeah. you know, I might see it. We'll see how much that rental, you know, price tag is. But um, I'm just someone that likes to kind of just see as much as I can. <laughs> so I might even. I know that. what you mean. Yeah. You know, just so that, you know, even if it's really bad and I can review it, you know. Yeah. It is what it is, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that is January 17th, and that's going to be an on-demand rental. Yeah. And so our next one I'm really excited about. <laughs> so <laughs> I watched the trailer for this immediately. Like the moment it came out, I was like, click. Um, so February 24th, we have Cocaine Bear. Which is loosely based on a true story. And it literally looks like it's just going to be this like over the top creature feature, essentially. I know it's a bear, but it's just going to be this like over the top killer bear. And I don't know if you noticed this. Someone commented on it when I posted about my thoughts on the trailer um, on YouTube. But did you know that the guy that goes up to the door in the trailer is the Ikea guy from TikTok? The guy Is it that really, yes. Oh, he's the so guy funny. That's like, the guy that pretends like he's talking about the customers and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. No, like, I know exactly who you're talking. Yes, about. <laughs> that's who that is. <laughs> well, so I thought that was really funny. Um, yeah, no, Cocaine Bear looks like a wild movie. It looks like it's just going to be so crazy and fun. And I am like, I'm. I think I'm going to have a blast watching it. Yeah. And funny, I think this is Ray Liotta's last film, too, before he passed away. It is, yes. Which, what a way to leave a legacy. I know, Cocaine <laughs> oh. Bear. <laughs> but Especially it's for Ray Liotta. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I am excited for this. You know, yeah. I think even, even my husband's going to watch. He's My husband's not a horror movie person, but this is more of like creature feature thriller. Or like a Fun, <laughs> kind of like not too heavy or scary. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be like a comedy. You know, there's some like really like funny bits to it. Um, yes. So, uh, yeah, I think this is just going to be like a fun. I fun agree. Movie. 
Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, that one comes out February 24th. That is February 24th. And, that and that's is a theater release. Theater. That's a theater release. Yeah. yeah. Although, you know, I've been I've been noticing is that, um, you know, movies get released on streaming so much earlier now. They do. They do. So that's, you know, if you miss it, you know. You don't have to wait that long, usually. Yeah, exactly. It's like True. a month. I think it's actually, I think it's like five or six weeks. I think I read it. It's like the typical. It's gotten a lot. It used to be months. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Oh my God. Even back in the, like back in the VHS DVD days, like you had to wait like. A year. Oh, a year. Practically. Pretty much. Practically. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, you're right. Which is wild. Um, yeah. How did we live back then? I don't know. I don't know. Hard times. Hard times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. And our last trailer, um, which I. I am excited for this one. I love a dino flick. Um, oh my god, yeah. So it's 65 starring Adam Driver and that's Ugh, March yeah. 17th. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, I mean, I could read the description. We have after a catastrophic crash on an unknown planet, pilot mm -hmm. Mills, Adam Driver, quickly mm -hmm. discovers he's actually stranded on Earth 65 million years ago. Now with only one chance at rescue, Mills and the only other survivor, Koa, uh, must make their way across an unknown terrain riddled with dangerous prehistoric creatures in an epic fight to survive. I'm so, so down for this. Yeah, it's such a cool concept. Yep. Right. Um, and you know, we don't really get. I mean, other than the Jurassic films, we don't really get dinosaur movies. No, it's not not like actiony ones. Like we get like. Um, so I watched a found footage movie called The Dinosaur Project. It wasn't. <laughs> It wasn't like grade A, but I loved it because it was like a dinosaur movie. Like I love dinosaur. Dinosaurs are huge in my house. We are big <laughs> dinosaur fans over here. Yes. I was a dinosaur for Halloween. Like we love dinosaurs. And so I'm like super excited about it. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. And I didn't know anything about this one. Had you heard about this before the trailer dropped? Uh, no, not before the trailer dropped. Me no. either. And that it's the only one on our list that I didn't already know was going to happen before it came out. I had wow. not heard a single word about this one. Nope. No, they, they, they had yeah. not been teasing it at all. No, um, and it's coming out in three months. I know. What in the world? Yeah. I mean, that's fine. I mean, that's fine. I mean, I guess, yeah, because it's not part of a franchise. It's not, Maybe, you know, yeah. I guess it's, yeah. does, it's not going to generate buzz on its own. I mean, it has Adam Driver, who I think is a big draw for a lot I of I love people. Adam Driver. Yeah. Yeah. He's great. He's um, great. Yeah. But it's cool. It's a fun mix of like futuristic sci-fi and yes! like dino, and it's not yeah. like I mean it's over the top in the fact that it's time travel and stuff. But it's not like it doesn't look like it's like a lot of explosions. It seems very like the survival element, which is what I love about the first Jurassic Park. Yes, right. No, that, I right? totally agree. Yeah, right. It's like that, like totally trekking agree. through the the terrain and like trying yep. to like outwit these like really smart hunters and yeah. It's it's got a lot. It's got a lot going for it. Um, yeah, I agree. And this is another trailer that I showed my husband, and he was like, "Yeah, I'll, I would see." Yeah, it. he's I very think, picky, yeah. but he would he would see it. I think this is yeah. very much something that skirts that line of sci fi horror, where people who are not necessarily horror fans or people who don't necessarily consider dinosaurs horror they are they're terrifying um, would go see this. So this is going to reach a bigger audience than some of the other movies we've talked about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Jurassic Park, 100% a horror movie. A thousand percent is a horror movie. Are you kidding me? That car scene with the T-Rex alone is, it still scares me. And I, I won't spend too much time on Jurassic Park, but I will tell you, I recently <laughs> saw, a, me and my husband went to our local, not local, it's it's an hour away, but we have a drive-in theater. Yeah. And oh, we cool. saw Jurassic Park in the drive-in. And and that scene with the surround sound in the car Ooh. is was something else that was probably that was so cool I bet. yeah uh so if anyone in new york go to go to the warwick drive-in support them they're really awesome there and yeah and they see, keep it up really cool. nice it's got a nice little concession stand you cool. know, you or food on your app they've like upgraded the drive-in experience yeah got it with the times <laughs> yeah exactly yeah i mean and that's Love how it. i was seeing movies during the pandemic Oh, yeah, that's a good point, yeah. Because they were still operating. I mean, they were showing a lot of classics when stuff wasn't coming still, out. But it's like, still something to go do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's like, because we have the baby, so we can kind of like bring him in the car. If he falls asleep in the car, we can still watch the movie, <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So 65, pivoting back to our trailer. <laughs> yes. It's March 17th. Um, yeah. So our next segment is going to be our news stories. Yes. 
Um, yeah. So our first up for our news stories was one that I was actually pretty excited about when I saw it. Um, so in our work, they're coming up or doing working on whatever the correct term for that is, um, the purge six. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing is they are bringing back, um, James DeMonico as Frank Grillo, which, um, I'm a huge fan of the purge, um, franchise, like not of the purge, but of the franchise, <laughs> I wouldn't purge. I would hide, just so we're clear. Um, unless you came for me and mine, and then, you know, that's a totally different story. But anyway, so I love the franchise. The Forever Purge was one I felt was one of the strongest, but I absolutely loved the character of Frank yeah. in the in Purge 2 or 3. He was in, he was in both Anarchy and Election Two Year. 2 and 3. Yeah, Election yeah. Year. That's right. Okay. So mm -hmm. I really loved his character, like, a lot, a lot. So when I saw this pop up and I saw the... You know, the um, it says like, you know, Purge Six, Frank, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh my God. Like, I'm really excited because I really loved his character. And um, again, a huge fan of the franchise. So this is like, this is really good news for people who love that character because I think a lot of people really do. I think a lot of people yeah. really liked him a lot. So I think there's going to be a lot of excitement about Six because I think um, the Forever Purge kind of lost some folks. It was very political. Um, which for yeah. me was not a bad thing. I think it made some really valid points and I thought yeah. it was a very well told story. Um, I loved it. Um, but I think it lost some momentum with purge fans. And yeah. so I'm, I'm thinking that bringing back Frank is actually a really smart move. Cause I think it's going to get people interested in like wanting yeah. to go see it again. So. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this yeah. is how you do it. Right. Cause it, cause after they stopped using Frank Grillo's character, it kind of, it just was an anthology because you had the first purge, the forever Everything purge. Everything changed. Yep. It just, it kind of just, I, I, I too enjoyed the forever purge. You know, it's like, you know, yeah. I, I don't, I don't quite understand complaints about it being political just because it's like, it's a movie about America and about the american all of them system are political yes all it's of like them you are political yeah you can't where I mean, have y'all been about, the whole rest of the franchise like, <laughs> it's about you know? yeah yeah so, i mean you can't yeah it can't be about the american government and not talk about politics because that that is what it that is. doesn't add up so it doesn't yeah it doesn't make sense like this is this is a movie where it 100 percent makes sense to have political messages in it um but yeah i'm excited i enjoyed the forever purge it was like it was cathartic right it was like uh yeah these people you know they you reap what you sow kind of story and it was i mean plus so much more and there was there were a lot of layers to it um so okay. i'm excited to see what comes next right because like yeah i mean the the la the one blurb and i think this is this was in a bloody disgusting article. Yeah. Um, yeah. And bloody disgusting. Yeah. They were just saying that it would presumably find um, Frank Grillo's character fighting for his life in a very different America. Right. So it's almost like an apocalyptic landscape. Yeah. Right? Because in our previous one, spoiler alert, um, it, everything's changed mm -hmm. because they're no longer following the rules of the purge, which for the record would really freaking happen. Can we talk about that? Like, so mm -hmm. I don't just mean the purge. I mean that too. But I more mean like if you tried to run a society like this, it is inevitable that people would get violence hungry or greedy or whatever yeah. you want to call it. And they would overtake that principle of like, oh, you're allowed for 24 hours or whatever. Right? Like right. that would happen. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think you can like contain that much violence. Until God, no. Night. That much hate? No, yeah. No. No, I mean no, no, it, it, no. it ended. I think where it needed to end, and this would be this almost takes it like in a, um, I mean, I, I this might be a really weird comparison, but it almost takes it in a, um, uh, like a Mad Max kind of. I no area, exactly yes right. I mean, Frank Grillo would be like a Mad Max type. Yep. Figure, you know, <laughs> like which yeah. would be, I, I, which I'm totally like in for. Yeah, no, I think it's going to be great. I think he's going to be amazing, and I think it's going to kind of revitalize what it may have lost a little bit the last couple of films. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're going to keep our eyes peeled for Purge 6 for more you yeah. know, new updates on that. Um, yeah. Our next story, I'm very <laughs> I'm excited for. <laughs> um, so uh, Velma got a release date. So for those that don't know, HBO Max um, is doing kind of an updated, more adult take on the Scooby gang. Um, yes. Just titled Velma, so it's going to focus on Velma Dingley. Velma. Yeah. Um, and I actually don't think Scooby-Doo is in this. I think it's just it's just the kids, mm -hmm. um, teens, adults, whatever old whatever. they are at this point. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of putting more of like a murder mystery spin to it. 
Um, the teaser that they had had an homage to Scream, which yep. was very fun. Yes. Uh, I know you probably really loved yes. it. Yes, <laughs> I did. That got um, me excited. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's being produced by Mindy, Mindy Kaling, who I really like. I think she's yeah. very funny. And she's, you know, I love her show, um, uh, Sex Lives of College Girls on HBO. Mm -hmm. Do you watch that? I haven't, but I know I've heard of it. Yeah. Oh, it's a good one. I mean, if you like, you know, I, I, it, it's a, it, it's fun. Yeah, it's that's that's not horror at all. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's comedy. That's you know, but um, <laughs> but I appreciate Mindy Kaling. So I think her her voice would be yeah. Well, she's just producing it, so I don't I don't know. But I'm assuming she'll have some creative say. Yeah. Um, so how do you feel about more of like a murder mystery take on this franchise? Yeah. Um. You know, I think. I, I always like when they take things from like our childhood and make them like adult for us. Like, I really love that. Like, like, and normally I mean that when I'm talking about like fairy tales and stuff, like mm -hmm. I really like dark fairy tale stuff, like take a, you know, like a sleeping beauty and make it like really messed up and dark yeah. and crazy. But I think like this is going to be somewhere between the two of like a, a darker, but I think it's going to be fun. Like, I think it's going to be a really unique, but it, it'll be a testament to the writing. Cause I think it's going to be like, a comedic but like serious i don't know like i think it's gonna toe the line between the mm -hmm. two probably really well um but no i'm i'm looking forward to it i i when i had heard originally that they were talking about a velma movie that was before they said it was going to be like an adult one so i was yeah. thinking like oh it'll be like a you know like a kid one or another whatever so i was actually really excited that it was going to be like a, a more grown-up story because i think there's a lot yeah. to be done there in the grown-up world, you know what I mean. So I'm yeah. no, I'm excited. I think it's going to be fun. Absolutely, it's something for us to enjoy. Like I think, like people were worried, like this was going to like replace Scooby Doo. Like oh, this God, is just no. like this is like a side thing. This is just like something. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, they're yeah. not like changing the DNA of Scooby. -Doo. I'm just going to pour myself a little more coffee. <laughs> Knock yourself out. <laughs> Give you a little coffee ASMR over there. Um, but. I, uh, yeah, no, I'm excited. I, you know, I, um, right, yeah, Velma's a fun character. Um, I agree. And she gets, know. she gets overlooked so much because she's like a background character through a lot of them, not all of them. Yeah. But through a lot of them. And you know, it's, it's, it'll be interesting to see what they do with it. I'm excited. Yeah. She does get sidelined, right? I mean, she's the yeah. smart one. She gets, she figures it all out. And then, mm -hmm. but it's really, it's about, you know, it's Shaggy, it's Scooby. And then you got the other two, you know, and then it's mainly them. So it's fun to see her in the spotlight. Um, yeah. But yeah. So that is coming out January 12th. I don't know if it's all, I, HBO Max doesn't do um, full series season drops. So that'll probably, what they, what they tend to do, HBO Max. Um, so I'll be curious what their model will be. They either do like, blocks so like for like sex lives of college girls they do like two episodes a week yeah kind of thing until it's done yeah um sometimes i think some shows like titans i think what they do is it's like they'll do they'll premiere three episodes and then do yes. one a week yep right yep. so we'll see what they end up doing with that so either yeah. way i don't think it's going to be bingeable which is fine sometimes you like to spread it out it's okay yeah because then we just get mad when we run out exactly so, right yeah um and yeah. I think so. We now we have our main story. Our, our main our story. story. <laughs> we're call it a main story. Our, our, you know, I think it's the one that we're probably most excited to. Talk yeah, about. I, yeah. So we got some. Um, we got more insight into, and I've I've actually been following this one pretty closely anyway because I'm very excited about this. Um, we got some more insight into Evil Dead Rise, um, which is one of my most anticipated films for 2023. I am so excited for this. I absolutely loved. Evil Dead, the remake, not remake. Um, and I am like, so when they announced this one, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be so exciting. And then we got like that sneak picture, like, I don't know, gosh, like a month ago now or something. It was like Halloween. Was it, was it like Halloween? Somewhere. Oh God, it was like so somewhere it was around. longer. Yeah. yeah. So of that, like up in the door, it looks like a peephole. Like, yeah. I was like, and you see the blood and the Mac, the like, oh, oh my God. I was like, Oh, this is going to be so good. I'm so excited. Um, but so we got more information about that. So um, they released another picture. And then um, the I don't know if it was the article that was titled this, but it was like something like we get to see the boomstick or something like that because she's holding like a shotgun in yeah. the picture. I Yeah. So 
But we also got like some more information about the story because everything has been with this has been like top secret information. Like there hasn't been anything about it. And then it was like, we got the picture and we were like, oh, like, oh my God, give me more, give me more, give me more. And so now we finally have like a little bit of a synopsis. So um, this is what it says. So in the fifth Evil Dead film, a road weary Beth pays an overdue visit to her older sister, Ellie, who is raising three kids on her own in a cramped L.A. apartment. The sister's reunion is cut short by the discovery of a mysterious book deep in the bowels of Ellie's building, giving rise to flesh-possessing demons and thrusting Beth into a primal battle for survival as she is faced with the most nightmarish version of motherhood imaginable. Mm. This sounds so good. I also love the concept of it being in an apartment building because I'm like, oh my God, so many people to possess. Like, yeah. A lot it's going to be ice. crazy. <laughs> yes. And it looks like they're not going to spare us any gore just from the two shots because even in the shotgun shot, she's covered in blood. Yeah. So I think it's going to be like really. Um, and I remember even, I think it was the director Lee Cronin, like I have, I literally have his Twitter account on noti like on notifications. Like, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> cause I, 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 yeah, I, I am following this film. Like, you know, I, I got my little lash up over here. Like, I love, I love this franchise. Yes. Um, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. So you and I, I mean, yes, but, um, you know, I don't even remember what I was going to say with that, but, <laughs> oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You so Lee Cronin posted a video um, of like, just a crap ton of blood. Did you see that video? I did. Yeah, it was just like fountains, <laughs> fountains of it. It's going to be excessive. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be wild. Um, you know, it'll be curious to see how they top 2013 because 2013 was pretty in terms of like blood itself. I mean, it literally rained blood on the cabin. <laughs> That's true. I, I and it was no easy task. Like <laughs> like how they how they managed to make that the way that they did, but that also had a lot of body gore. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, body horror, like a yeah. lot of it. And and the original did too, or the originals did too, but this is obviously like new age gore. So it's very different. It's not mm -hmm. as silly. It's not as like gray. <laughs> it actually looks like real body yeah. parts and blood and guts. And I am so excited for this. I, I like Evil Dead is definitely, or Evil Dead Rise is definitely one of my most anticipated and i i'm not worried about it like for whatever reason i'm going into it knowing it's gonna kick ass and i'm gonna love it like i just know i'm going to you know well i mean the the franchise is like i don't know how many i mean i would consider the three movies the 2013 and the show i would consider it five for five i have never been disappointed in this franchise no, no. matter who it, either it's fede alvarez yeah. uh, sam raimi like it's the show. Like I have enjoyed everything that this franchise has, you know. So yeah. well, I haven't seen the show, but okay. But I know that it's been a fan favorite. I know a lot of people have really enjoyed. It. Yeah. Oh, the show is so fun. Um, I mean, I think it's a eventually. great. Yeah. It's a great cap to Ash's story. Okay. Um. You yeah. know, I, I'm curious because well, we we do know that Ash is not in this. Yes. But it takes place kind of. Like, I guess that you know it really is a multiverse. You know every. Multiverse it has content. to be, or these don't work as continuation. Otherwise, they don't work, yeah. right? Yeah. So I'm curious, like, is this in the same universe as Mia's universe, or is this a separate one completely? Um, yeah. Like, did, did Mia's like book end up over there, or like, is you there know? another one? Right. You know. So, like, just, where does this come from? How does it? Uh -huh. Yeah, because I think that's important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm I'm really looking forward to this. I am very confident that this is going to blow us out of the water. I think it's going to be phenomenal. Not we're getting it very all. soon. It's um, what is it? March. Oh, I don't have it in our in our show. Our notes. cheat sheet. <laughs> I don't have it in our cheat sheet, so I'm going to just pull it up. On... Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I'm thinking. Andy. I'm thinking like prediction wise. I'm betting that Evil Dead Rise makes my top ten for 2023. A hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah, I just can't imagine it wouldn't. I am I know it's just going to blow me away. I'm really excited about it. Why is the date not on... Oh, April. April 21st. April. Okay. I don't, Friday, I don't know why I thought it was March. Because we've set a couple of March dates already, I think. But yeah, Yeah, April. so it actually comes out on my husband's birthday. <laughs> oh, beautiful. <laughs> no, no, no. So he's like, it's so funny because he saw me posting about it and he was like, it's okay. You can go see this movie. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, no, it's okay. I'm going to go on the night before. So I'm not going to miss your birthday for this movie. That's so cute. <laughs> um, but it's just, yeah, that, that 
that's the kind of guy he is. He's like, you can go see this movie. I know it means you a lot. You guys are funny. Yeah. I started <laughs> following him on Twitter. He's hysterical. Did you? Oh my God. His, he's so, he's obsessed with this Twitter. But anyway. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't mean anything horror related for everyone out there. He, he live tweets reality television and that's it. It's, like, that's really, his... it's comical though. It's comical. <laughs> yeah. he'll, he'll be very happy you said that. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll he'll blush a little, okay. um, <laughs> but um oh yeah, but we also forgot there was another photo. I guess so for the Evil Dead Rise. Oh, the photo, water one. I'm sorry, the water yeah. one, which is very interesting, right? Like, yeah, like is, what the heck does that mean? Is this by the? I mean, my my first thought is, does the cabin exist in this universe? Like, is she by in this photo where she's rising from the water? Is this a lake by the cabin? I think I think a lot of these things are. I think like the mention of the book. And the mention and the picture of the water, I think, is all meant to confuse us. Yeah, probably, yeah. I think it, I think it's meant to get us really excited, and it's doing a very good job. It's doing what it's meant to do as these like tiny teasers that they're giving us. But yeah, I I am very curious about how this story because because one thing is is like even though the Evil Dead series, the franchise, however, whatever, is like very gory and over the top and stuff like that. It also has always had a consistent story. Always. Yeah. There's always a story. It's always easy to follow. And so I'm very curious how that plays into this new one as from as far like as a story side of it, because yeah. it won't be strong if there's not a good enough story. So I'll be really curious like what they do with it. Because again, I'm thinking they're gonna nail it. I'm not worried. So I'm but mm -hmm. I am curious like what that's gonna look like. How do you feel about the franchise tackling? maybe it sounds like the the trials and tribulations of motherhood right because that's that was something that was part of the the um synopsis right this this yeah, nightmare version of motherhood yeah you know it was just you know it's interesting that these like non um bruce campbell evil deads they yeah. they seem to be, they seem to be focused on tackling issues or like real, just issues. Like real yeah. issues, like you know the whole addiction story with Mia in was twenty thirteen was so well done though, beautifully done. Yep, that was so freaking good, so good. Uh, and so it seems like they're going to be tackling like I don't know if she's a single mom. I don't know, like I don't know. Yeah, we don't know her she, story. I, I think it kind of. Well, oh, I thought it said that she was. Oh, maybe. I, I kind of felt like that's what it was pointing at. It's like she's doing this on her own with three kids or whatever. I think. So anything, um, anything that is telling the story of women, I'm obviously like all mm -hmm. for, um, because, you know, we, we, we are coming from this place of, you know, horror utilizing women as, you know, these, these sex objects or these final girl situations, which is not exactly the same thing as tackling women's issues. Exactly. Um, yeah. and I think that, you know, it's, it's interesting to see because, you know, they could have had Mia in 2013 could have been a boy you know and it wouldn't like and you wouldn't have really thought about it if that had been how it was introduced but it was specifically a female and she by the way nailed that character mia is amazing yeah. um but i think no i think it's interesting i think anything mother related always hits home for me because you think like it's always it's it's more effective because then what do you do if you're trapped in an apartment complex or apartment building or whatever and everyone is possessed by these murderous, demonic things. And you've got babies to protect. What do you do? Like, yeah. and it's so scary and like realistic in a sense that like, you're like, oh my God, what if that was like me and mine, you know, like, and so that I, I automatically know that my discomfort is going to be through the roof because anything about babies is like yeah. instant, you know, um, but that's effective horror. I mean, it, it just is, you know, um, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's great. I, I really like the, the diving more into like, I mean, even in, in this off of evil dead, but, um, a wounded fawn. Yeah. That women's story was phenomenal. Um, mm -hmm. resurrection. Um, I don't know if you got to see that one with Rebecca Hall. And I didn't get to see resurrection yet. I saw wounded fawn, but I didn't get to see resurrection. Okay. you got to watch resurrection. It's so good. But resurrection tackles women issues. There, there's a lot there. there and, and I love that horror is doing that, that we're stepping away from these cookie cutter, final girl, girl that takes her clothes off, st mm -hmm. stereotypical bullshit. And then we're going into more serious, like this is what it's really like sometimes. Yeah. 
you know, when you're a single mom and you're facing the world, it is like facing an apartment building full of demons. You have mm -hmm. to, you have to protect your child. And I think, no, I think it's great. I'm really excited. Absolutely. All and of that to say. <laughs> <laughs> All that to say you're excited. But no, I mean, yeah. very well put. I couldn't have said it. Yeah, obviously not. I'm a father, but not a mother. So I couldn't <laughs> yeah. put it, I couldn't put it any of that way. But any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but this is the first Evil Dead with ki like kids. I know. I'm like nervous. Like, I mean, how, I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm like, yeah, They're I'm gonna nervous. They're going to push the like, boundaries. You know they are. There's three kids. Something, There's, something bad's going to happen. At least going to happen. And they're going to, I mean, are they going to, I'm, I, I mean, know, I'm, I know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like you got to show that. I mean, oh, I don't, maybe. I mean. They're going to really, I think this one's going to be really pushing the boundaries. I really do. Yeah. It's everything about it so far tells me it's, it's ready to unnerve some people for real. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm excited either way. Yeah. No, right. me too. For sure. So I we had a couple, and I didn't put it in on our show notes, but there we did have another segment idea um, yes. about just what are you, what are we watching? Do we have any just recommendations for the people out there? A wounded fawn. <laughs> that was a good segue because you did just, you did just mention two. <laughs> good shout. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm technically in the middle of watching stuff that's not horror related. So the mm -hmm. last couple things I watched um, was um, Wounded Fawn. I watched that not that long ago. Um, I watched a found footage. Well, never mind. You said recommend. I wouldn't recommend that one. We're going to skip over that. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of what else I've watched that's horror related. I'm actually watching the Arcane series on Netflix right now. <laughs> oh, fun. I, you know, I started it and it's not like I, I didn't like lose interest. I just kind of like didn't watch it for like a week and then it just kind of snowballed and I just never. Oh my God. Up. So I'm on episode two. I'm virtually watching it with someone else and I'm like, I'm really into it and I don't even play League of Legends, but I'm like, it's so beautifully drawn. The visuals in this film, the music. Oh my God. So good. Um, and then, um, I also just recently watched, this one may make you laugh. I just recently watched Silver Linings Playbook. Have you seen that? Uh, yeah. Oh my God. It's so <laughs> freaking good. I'd never seen it before. I cried like a baby, like three times. So good. Yeah. Um, like the beginning of Jennifer Lawrence's kind of like. She is career. phenomenal in yeah. that though. Yeah. And then I also just recently watched La La Crocodile. <laughs> I have a four and a half year old. And so um, if people need to be reminded, you are a mother. <laughs> I am a mother, yes. You so are just I casually do, watching. My, my TV time is like, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> yeah, but horror-wise, yeah. Wounded Fawn was fantastic. I recently played Catch Up. So that, Resurrection, Smile, I finally got to see. Mm -hmm. Um I'm trying to think of what else. Those are like my big ones because I, I had to wait for all of that stuff to go. Well, not Resurrection, but Smile, I had to wait to come on streaming before I could watch it. So I finally got oh, to yeah. see that. What about you? What have you guys, or what have you been watching? So recently we watched, so not horror, but horror adjacent. So we watched uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio on Oh, Netflix. I watched that too. Oh my God. I sobbed. I it's sobbed. It's so beautiful. It is like beautiful story, beautiful animation. So very sad. Very, very sad. sad. Um, darker gorgeous. than I thought yes. it was going to be. Yes. Much darker. Um, like they don't sugarcoat anything like God, no it, it's not like, it's not a yeah no yeah because it's like geppetto's son dies in world war one he builds pinocchio in world war two and it's like no it's world war two there's nazis it's yeah. messed up it's, it's so a pretty sad. messed up movie but it's beautiful yeah. right i mean because it's all about it's like fathers and sons and it's like it's yeah. such a beautiful story um yeah it's, it's about like, grief, grief and healing and parental expectations oh, oh my man. god it's so good yeah i 100 percent recommend it like it yeah. I mean, I know Pinocchio, like the Disney Pinocchio is a classic, but like... This is like I, a whole nother level. This is a whole... I would watch this... I, I would watch this again, like in a heartbeat. This this would be like a yearly movie for me. Yeah. No, Dude, I That's agree. how much I love this movie. I agree. It's really good. Yeah. I mean, on top of that, I'm trying to think what else. I mean, it was December, so I was watching like Christmas Horror, so I watched... Oh, yeah, know, me too. The original Black Christmas. Yep. Um, I recently got the 4K restoration for that i know um, i told you i was like vicariously living oh yeah, you. yeah yeah, i showed you because i got this i get I, I'm, I'm i love the scream factory like 4k yes. releases that they do so i got the collector's edition from that and it looks stunning yeah um so i had watched that um i mean other than that like horror wise i'm like <laughs> blanking i'm like yeah, yeah i'm blanking but definitely Pinocchio. i know yeah Watch Black Christmas, the original, if you haven't seen it yet. I know you just recently did a remake episode. Yes, on the 2006. <laughs> I wish we 
<laughs> we, don't have to, we don't have to get into that. I know. I think I told you. I, it's like a guilty. It's a guilty pleasure. pleasure. It's not yeah. like I know. I know it's because you know what it is. And I, this is the one thing I will say about it. It's like you take a movie that's like about women, and but then you make it about the male killer instead. Like that's essentially what they did with the remake. And that that's kind of the big. I, that's the biggest problem I have with it. Yeah. Well, and the original is social commentary. You know, it came out the year after Roe versus Wade. Yeah. 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 So it's a social commentary on on women and their bodies, body autonomy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Which um, kind of goes to your fact. It was like you know the original Black Christmas is like. It, it went against the grain of like the final girl stuff that like you were saying. Like yep. it, 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 it didn't, it didn't go into those kind of. It, yeah. No, you know? no, it was great. Um, Love that one. But I do appreciate, I mean, I don't know if you, Andrea Martin is in the remake though. Yes. Who is in the original. And yes. I do. Enjoy, and I love her. I think she's, she's my favorite part of the remake. It's just some of the little she's things. She's likable. Yeah. No, she's I don't know. She, she's, she's great at comedy. I always laugh. Um, about you know, I mean, not horror, but my big fat Greek wedding. She plays the aunt, and I always, yeah. I always quote the babopsy and like the. the <laughs> you know, yeah. I'd say, you, "What do you mean you don't eat no meat?" I, I literally say that at least at least once a week. I mean, oh my it, god, that's it, so funny. I, I try to work it into every conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which you can. Sometimes it's just me saying random my big fat Greek wedding quotes, but um, <laughs> but I think um, yeah. But other than that, I mean, definitely. So Pinocchio, I think that's my my number one. Yeah. <laughs> Long way to say go watch. That. <laughs> no, it's great. I agree. Watch that. It's good. Um, yeah. and now I think we have, and now we have some shout outs. Yeah. So, um, I wanted to, um, my first shout out is going to be, well, first for this, you know, one for the first episode, but, um, is going to be the you run podcast. Um, I have a remake series that I do with one of the hosts from that, uh, Scott, we do a series once a month on horror remakes. Um, I've been on their stuff. They've been on, he and his co-host Mark have been on mine. They're fantastic. They do, um, he has a true crime element. He does horror movie reviews. Um, he's a YouTube component and they, they do, um, but they also have a separate episode that they do every Friday, every Friday, every other Friday. I, I think it's every, every Friday. I might be wrong. Um, where they do horror news, where they just talk horror news and, they usually do it after they've recorded an episode. So they're usually kind of like silly and a little buzzed and they have a great time. Um, super entertaining show. The show is completely controlled by the viewers. They do polls. They don't pick the movies themselves. Everything is viewer driven. Um, they play games and they do quizzes and they, um, they do three word reviews. So you can be posted, you know, they'll talk about like your review on the show and give you a shout out and they do recommended accounts of the week. And they're super supportive, lively, fun, fantastic, um guys at you run podcast so that's my shout out for this episode awesome awesome i love that i love the concept of viewer run that sounds that's sounds oh amazing. it's amazing yeah they yeah. do a great job yeah uh so my shout outs is, is also a little bit of a shameless plug <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um so it, it's a little self um self-serving self <laughs> it's the first one i won't do that for the next ones but um <laughs> so i i am part of slash do some editing for um the horror hour it they're on youtube there's a podcast um it's it, it's just a fun group of guys you know we're talking horror um things get a little raunchy you know <laughs> yeah. it's a little unfiltered over there so if you don't mind that kind of stuff you you're welcome to join the party <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um episodes um oh, I, I should know this um i think our wednesdays <laughs> I should know it. Um, plus, there's also sporadic stuff. There might be, might be yeah. some like reactions to trailers or movies, and there's all. It, it's just a party. I mean, I, they have the Patreon over there, so sometimes I know they do like live streams. Yeah. Um, which I haven't been part of that yet, but the live streams are fun. Um, yeah. So that's the Horror Hour. I think all their handles are at the Horror Hour TV, and they're on Twitter, Instagram, and then it's YouTube, and then wherever you get podcasts. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So that's a fun group. Um, but yeah, so that's my little shout out. Yeah. So I think that concludes our first episode of The Coffee Crypt. Yay! <laughs> the start is something new. But yeah. I got two coffee, two cups of coffee in. So <laughs> you're going to be up. Hopefully, that's now's a good time to watch more stuff because you're going to be up and ready exactly. to go. I, I know. And I've been rewatching the MCU, not horror related, but I'm just, you know. Oh, okay. If you can't see a tell from my background, I do. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. machine over there. I got a shit ton of 
comic books back there. Yeah. <laughs> so they, got a, they got a whole lot of whole slew of other interests. So. Yes. Well-rounded nerd. Is <laughs> yeah. The... <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Geek chic. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I love it. There yeah. We go. <laughs> Great. So, um, yeah. Well, that's all we have for this episode of the Coffee Crypt. Uh, Steve and I will be back in two weeks with mm -hmm. um, some more fun conversations about all that's new in the world of horror. Yeah. Thank you. And mm -hmm. goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> My cup's empty. <laughs>